I've got the camera all aimed up here and this is my melted wax. Uh, a lot of you have seen it before. I have a whole video on how to wax the bottoms of your pots. And this is, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna use this one as an example and show you how I put wax resist on something like this to um, before I glaze it. So I've got just bisque and I think I want this design to have some movement. So I've just got a bristle brush. I don't use nylon in this because it'll melt. Um, I have a I have a sort of a small one and this one is a little bit newer but it's a little bit wider so I think I'm gonna make the little dashes the lines and you can make a very fussy very detailed design on something uh, it's very possible so I'm just going to apply this like so and let the drips run if the, if you don't get enough on there you can certainly go back and put some more in the same spot so that's and this is just very random. It turns out very abstract. The uh, the attitude that you hold it at is going to make those things run in a particular direction. Very abstract, like I said. If you're using this, if, if you're letting kids use this, they tend to overdo it. So you have to watch out for that. They want to cover the whole thing with wax. And they forget that they're going to be putting glaze over it. Let's see. You know, I think that's enough. So now when this thing... Let's hold that up. Might need something. There's a kind of an empty spot there, but so when this is glazed, you'll have a sort of a swirl effect. Let's see what I can do with that spot right there. There we go. I like that. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Every place you see wax, you're not going to see glaze when it's glazed. And that will give you the result of... And I'm going to move the camera over here so I can show you that. Get my... Don't leave your brush in the wax. You could start a fire that way. And if you'll notice, my electric... Um, skillet is not plugged in right now. I got it a little too hot and it started smoking and that's not good for you. So if you do this, do it in a well ventilated area, you may be able to hear that I have my stove fan on and an, and an overhead ceiling fan to just dissipate that. But I turned the power off to it just so that I could not have that smoke. But it was still melted enough to, to do this. And that's pretty much, I don't know. I used this for high school and freshman kids uh, in college. And of course the adults are okay with it. You know, they know better, most of them know better than to uh, put their hand in there or you know, they know that wax is flammable. So, I would say use your best judgment and caution if you're doing this with kids. Any younger than that, they definitely need to be supervised. Even high school kids need to be supervised. Let me tell you, they will surprise you. <laughs> okay, hang on, I'm gonna turn this off for a minute. I wanna show you some finished 
things that are the result of the same type of uh, wax application. Uh, here's a bowl that has the um, sort of a angle. It sort of has a little motion there. And this is, this served two purposes. It reduced the amount, everybody knows how much blue rutile runs, right? This wax resist reduced the amount of uh, glaze that was going to accumulate down here near the foot. So that's really what I was trying to do when I did this. And then I thought, well, I like that, so I'll do some more. So there's that bowl. Here's another bowl that has a more dramatic um, angle to it. Maybe I should take that paper off of there. So there's the bowl, and I'll just turn it around. Get it a little closer, maybe. Splotches. The brush was bigger that I used on here. And uh, this is on stoneware clay. So that's there's that bowl. I did not do it in the interior because if it's good, excuse me, if it's gonna be used for food, uh, you probably don't want bare clay. People just have a mental thing about that, even though the clay does actually seal up pretty good. Uh, people just, you know, people are funny. Here's one. Brown part you see is bare clay, and then I put little dots of glaze in there. This, this background color was the first dip, and then I put another color there. It looks a little bit like a fox or a rabbit or something so here over here let's move this is a here is a plate that has that brown part is wax resist and then this 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 is just a real black uh, brownish black you probably it probably looks black to you but if you get it in the right light you can see that it's kind of a brownish glaze and it has little spots of glue in there I mean blue in there too and um, that's resist now these two things kind of go together they're the same batch of glaze but let me show you Oh, and here's another really dark one. This, this one kind of goes together with, with the one behind it. And this has a little bit of blue that showed up right here in that glaze. And I have a blue shirt on, so it's probably reflecting a little bit of that blue. So here, here's the little tea bowl that I love the color of clay when you use a, a stoneware that is brown or some has color. Very organic looking. So there's that. And then I also used it on this piece. This is a, a little box, and so it's two pieces, and I put a little registration mark over here so I could always find the right place. Here it is. I put a little dot of wax there and a little dot on the bottom part so that I could always match up 
the little stripes. So to, to put the wax on here, I put it on the top and then let it dribble down the side. And so you have that sort of, you have sort of a striped effect. Okay, so did I show you everything? I think I did. One more thing on, on using wax in a in a in an electric skillet is when you're finished and before the wax even starts to harden up, if you turned it off, put the lid back on because sometimes things will drop in here. It's just for safety. I guess I'll be finding these all over the place after after we're done with this video. Let me put this over here so you can see that. Here's a little teapot that I did with that same technique. I did the lid separately from the top because I wanted it to dribble off the off of the uh, edge, but I didn't want it to get on the bottom, so. So that worked out pretty well. Okay, I just forgot to include that in there while I was putting the other things away. I saw that. This is my cookie jar, and it has cookies in it, just like cookies guard. That's a good cookie jar because with the cookies inside there, and it, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, it sort of keeps me from wanting to eat some. So they last a long time if you have a lid on it and you can't see through it. Okay, so this is the same technique. It's a very, this is one of the very first ones, uh, pieces that I did like this. And it's very easy for kids to do because they, um, they can get some kind of unique results with just one glaze, with one bottle of glaze or one color of glaze. And sometimes students don't have a lot of choices. So this is a pretty, a pretty unique technique and and kids tend to like it because they especially like to mess around with the wax. So you used to tell me there was a bird on here. Maybe that's oh, I don't know. There's a, that kind of looks like a bird with a wing and scissor tail. I don't know. Anyway, okay, we'll go on to the next. I want to show you something that, um, well, I needed to come in here and, and do this, so I thought it might be helpful to you guys, too. Um, I buy these sponges at the dollar store. You get a whole package of them. There's six six of them, and they, they, they come from China, I'm sure. Um, no, I'm sorry. They're made in Mexico. I take that back. I apologize to Mexico. Um, so here, my uh, here are the sp I like this part of the sponge. I don't like this part for pottery. This part's great for you know cleaning the bathtub or whatever. I guess you could probably exfoliate your skin with that. Yikes! But um, the way so what I do with them to use them out in the studio. They're a dollar for six of them, guys, so you can't beat that for a price, right? Dang, this camera. So, I take a really huge, very sharp knife, and I hold this on a cutting board, but I'm just going to put, if your knife is sharp enough, you can do this very easily. You use it like a saw. A bread knife would probably work, and probably even those electric uh, bread knives would work. So what you have done is you've skinned off this part right here, and you can save that to clean the kitchen sink or something. But then this is, I just, I don't know what it is about these sponges, but I really like them, and you used to be able to buy them without this on them. Uh, but now they come with that, so we don't have a lot of choices. 
Now, I like triangular sponges, and so sometimes, not every one, but sometimes I will cut them in triangles, and that way I can run this around a rim, and it's very handy for doing that. This, this part right here, let me put that behind it. So you have this natural kind of groove that goes down here, but that on both ends, that is very handy for running around a rim. And <clears throat> you can get underneath a pot, like if it's on the wheel, you can get underneath a pot this way. These are really absorbent. And I like these the best when they're just gnarly and very worn out. So I hate giving up a sponge because you just kind of grow with it and you get used to it. So here, here are enough sponges to last me for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. But I just wanted to share that with you, help you save some money in your studio, especially classroom teachers that are making sponges for lots of kids. Don't get this mixed up in your clay water where it ends up in your recycled clay, though, because that doesn't smell good when it burns in the kiln. Okay, guys, that's it for now. I'll, I'll uh, get back to the other video. I think I showed you this one. And I believe I showed you this one. upside down it looks like monsters on stilts or something <laughs> walking around okay you can do so many things whether it's abstract or uh, very very purposely placed and there's my little guy and I'm just gonna glaze it just like I normally would either you can either dip it or you can brush it Either way, you're going to have a beautiful piece. So thank you for watching. We'll come back again soon. Thanks. Bye.